much do you think your phone costs? When we're thinking about cost, we should not only be thinking about monetary value, but also the opportunity cost. The opportunity cost is the overall loss when one option is selected instead of another. So when talking about our phone, we don't only want to think about how overpriced it is, but also the environmental effects incurred in creating the phone. Let's think about an important ingredient in our phones, minerals. And the devastating thing about this fact is that mining for these minerals causes environmental damage. So let's first discuss what exactly is a mineral. They are naturally formed, not made by humans. Minerals are also inorganic which means that they are not alive, nor are they made from plants and animals. Minerals are solids. They are not liquid like water or gas like the air around us. Minerals also have a definite chemical composition, which means each one is made of a specific mix of chemical elements. And lastly, minerals have an ordered atomic arrangement. This means that they are arranged in a specific way. It is not just our phones that require mining, but coal is mined to generate more than half of the electricity in the US. Iron ore is mined to make steel, and copper is used in a variety of ways, from building construction projects to medical equipment. So as you can see, we are heavily dependent on mining activities. Now that we understand what minerals are and why they are important, let's explore how they are obtained. Surface mining is the method of extracting minerals near the surface of the earth. This requires the removal of surface materials to retrieve the desired minerals. Strip mining, a type of surface mining, requires the removal of rock and soil to successfully extract the resources. Miners are required to refill the holes and restore the landscape. If this is not properly done, it can result in flooding and disrupted ecosystems with water pollution and increased sediment. This follows recent U.S. development, which declares that a mine region must be restored to its natural state. This process is called reclamation. However, older mines do not have to follow this law. These pits may be filled with water and become lakes or turned into landfills. Mountaintop removal mining is a more extreme version of strip mining in which whole mountaintops are removed to access the minerals deep inside the mountain. The mountaintop material is then left in areas of lower elevation, such as nearby river and stream valleys, where it reshapes the whole landscape, pollutes water, and disrupts ecosystems. So we've learned how difficult it is to keep the land intact when we are mining for minerals. We are now going to do a demonstration using a blueberry muffin. Can you successfully mine for blueberries while not destroying the earth, our muffin? First, we need to make a plan. It is common that before surface mining can begin, the person in charge of the operation must provide a mining plan, reclamation plan, financial assurances, and a mine inspection. To do this activity, you will need a blueberry muffin and a mining material of your choice. Here I have a paper clip that is taken apart, a toothpick that is almost like dental floss, a spoon, a fork, and a knife. So those are all of my mining tools today and we are going to see which one works. The muffin represents a land area and the blueberries are valuable deposits. Your goal is to remove as many mineral deposits or blueberries with the least amount of damage to the land possible. So let's get started on my muffin. I am surveying the land and I see that there's a little bit of blue peeking out. And so I'm gonna take off some of the top layer as we learn they do in surface mining. So I have already accidentally cut into part of our valuable deposits. However, now I have access to that and I'm going to use a knife to cut around and try to remove it. Okay, I've successfully extracted one. I'm now going to move on to the 
side. And I'm going to try to use my spoon to help with this operation. Okay, got a second one out. third blueberry, but this one has a lot of land attached to it. And part of the mountain has fallen over. And as we said before, the leftover land that really has no value just gets put down onto the lower surface areas. But because of that, I am able to get deeper into the muffin and secure some minerals. but there's really not that much in the center. So I've made a miscalculation, which is also no good to the land because I've destroyed it for almost no reason to get one deposit. So now I think I have gotten most of the deposits out of the main part of the land. And so I wanna survey some of the areas I've taken apart. And before I put them back together, I wanna to make sure I've gotten as many valuables as possible. So I see here this top piece, I'm gonna cut off. And I'm gonna begin building parts of it that I can. And so you see how it's virtually impossible to put the muffin back together exactly as it was before. Because even if some of them are in the same spot, there is not that, that stickiness holding them together, that natural ability for the land to just stay together. And we can see if an earthquake comes, ready? The land automatically falls apart because we don't have that intact piece that natural land creates. So this is the final result of my muffin surface mining. I would say it was mildly successful. I was able to get a bunch of valuable deposits here, but a lot of them are attached to the land. And the land itself is no longer together. And so overall, you have to ask yourself if mining is necessary to do so often because these are the results that happen to your land. Thank you so much for coming along with me on my journey to explore the effects of human impact on our environment. I hope you will implement some of the activities we learn together on a more regular basis. I know I will.